Today we show you how to use uh, Carnot maps to simplify functions. Here is the same function we were using when we were discussing the SOP and POS forms. So let us use this now to simplify using a Carnot map. First we draw the Carnot map. As you can see it has eight squares. One for each row of the truth table. There we have put on the row A, B, and C in each square so you can see which square relates to which row. And we know this because you can see there in the green that the A and the B and the C come directly from the rows. So study this until you are satisfied that you know how to find the special square for each individual row of the truth table. Okay, now you see we have put in the zeros and ones of the function into their respective squares. For a sum of products solution, you need to circle groups of adjacent squares containing ones. The rules concerning the groups are that a group of circle squares can only have in two, four, or eight squares. You cannot circle groups with three, five, or seven. It must be a power of two. The adjacent squares have a common side as shown above. So let's do that. We've circled them here in the green. And now, what do we do with those circles? What do the circle groups actually mean? For each circled group is a term of the simplified SOP function. So therefore, one of those circled groups is A and the other circled group is BC. There they are shown. The more squares there are in a group, the fewer letters there are going to be in the term. A two square group drops one letter and a four square group drops two letters. Since the function has in three letters, you can see that the four square group after dropping two letters is only going to be one letter. How do you know that the group of four squares is A? That's a very good question. All four squares in the group have A equals one in common. That's a very important statement. That's why it's in red. So take a look at the table, the Carnot map, and see that all four squares in that circled green group have A equals one in common. In a similar fashion, the two square group have B and C equal to one for both squares. Can you see that? If not, take a closer look at the Carnot map. One last thing, the edges of the map are also adjacent to each other. There is a definition of the edge. It's as if you wrapped the whole Carnot map around a pencil so that the two edges touch each other. This means that if you have ones at the edges, this is actually a group 
of four squares. And in this case, the term is actually C bar. Because all four squares have C equal to zero, even though they differ in A and B. Check it out for yourself in the map above. Would you care to try a four variable map? Here we've drawn three of them and we've put on four ones in the corners. It turns out these four ones are all adjacent to each other because all the edges touch each other. It's as if your Carnot map was wrapped around a ball so that all edges touch each other. Those four are B bar, D bar because they have B, all four squares have B as a zero and the D as a zero. Check it out for yourself. Here we have an adjacent eight squares. Eight squares remove three letters. Since the function has four letters, A, B, C, and D, after we move, remove three letters, we have D bar because all eight squares have D as a zero, even though they all differ in the other three letters. Finally, we have an adjacent four as shown here. And these four represent B bar D because the four squares that are in the group have B as a zero and D as a one, even though all four squares differ in their A and C. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.